In this video, you're going to learn how to design the schematic circuit diagram for your own custom ESP32 board that also includes a built-in battery charger. And I'm going to be using the free open source KiCad design software for this tutorial. Okay, let's get started. The first step that I like to do for creating the schematic diagram is to place all of the critical components, which includes the microchips and the various connectors. So let's start doing that. I'm going to start with the ESP32 module, specifically the ESP32 S3 Mini. And this is the version with the built-in PCB antenna. Now I'm going to add in the battery charger, which I've chosen the TI-BQ24040. Then we have a linear regulator. I'm using, once again, a TI part, which is a TLV758. And I'm going to go with the O1, and the O1 just means it's an adjustable version, so you can set the output voltage using the resistor divider. Then we're going to have a USB-C port. This port is not going to be for powering the product. Instead, it's going to be just purely for communication directly with the ESP32. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to add a USB-C. We want a receptacle, and we want USB 2.0, and we'll do the 16-pin version. Then now we just need a, I'm going to just use a standard uh, barrel jack for power. We need ESD protection for the two data lines that go to the outside world as, and also the 5 volt power supply. And I've selected this ESD7104. And I think the only main component left is a JST connector for plugging in the lithium polymer battery. So I'm going to put that here. Okay, that is all of the critical components. Now I'm going to place some resistors and capacitors. I like to just start with a capacitor, unpolarized, and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make add this a footprint to it. And I'm going to go with a cap and I'm going to do an 0603. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing with the resistor. I'm going to add a footprint. I'm just going to copy this one capacitor around and use that in the various places. That's going to be our input cap for our battery charger. We're going to have an output cap for the battery charger. We have an input cap for the linear regulator, output cap for the linear regulator. Let's also put a capacitor right where the power supply comes in. Then we'll have a couple decoupling caps for the ESP32. And then we're going to have a small cap that holds the enable O initially and then another cap on the boot, just place there. So now we're gonna need a few resistors. We have a resistor divider for our linear regulator because it's an adjustable. Our battery charger needs a resistor here to set the termination current. And the last passive components I need to add are the LEDs. So I'm gonna just do LED, and we're gonna have three of them, but I'm gonna do like I did with the resistors and capacitors and set a footprint and then copy it. And once again, I'm just going to do the 0603 for these LEDs as well. And the last component that we need to add are just two little push buttons. Uh, one is going to be for the reset on the ESP32 and the other one is the boot. I'm going to use this here. Um, this matches the PTS810, which is just a normally open push button switch that has two terminals on each side. Now I'm going to go add the footprint and then this is a PTS 810. Yes, here it is. In the full length version of this video, which you can access using the link shown here, or you can also find the link in the description. And in the full length version, I review the various data sheets and explain a lot more of the details while designing this same circuit. Okay, now I'm going to just start uh, connecting everything up. So let's uh, start with the battery charger. And what we can do here is refer to the data sheet. We're just going to have our input with a one microfarad cap. Then we've got ground, this I set, 1K ohm. That's what you use to set the maximum charge current. So we'll have a resistor from I set to ground. This resistor sets the pre charge current and the termination current. Let's go back to our schematic and start connecting up. And we're going to connect up this. Uh, Resistor, we're going to go ahead and make this a 540 ohm. That sets the maximum charge current to 1 amp. 
This is according to the data sheet, needs to be at least one microfarad. So we'll just go with the minimum, one microfarad. VSS or the ground. And then this EXP is just a, a power pad that's underneath the part that allows, it helps it to dissipate the heat into the ground plane. Then I'm going to have the output. Let's move this capacitor here. And now we're just going to bring these up to do that one for the charge. And this one we can just go through here. And, you know, what you would normally do to calculate these, you figure out what the current is you want through the LED for the particular brightness that you want. Then you know this output here. It's going to be between 3.6 and 4.2, whether it's being powered from the battery or if uh, you're in a, actually actively charging. So you would just take this power supply minus whatever the diode drop is here, and this will depend on the color of the LED. So you would look that in the data sheet. Then you know whatever voltage is left is dropped across here, and then you can just use Ohm's law to set that. I'm going to just label this input. I'm going to call it 5VN. Go up to the power connector, the barrel jack. Let's go ahead and connect up this capacitor. And I'm also going to label this the same. And now those should be connected. We can check that by doing highlight. Yeah, you can see they both turn this pink color. So those are connected. Now what we're going to do is take the output of the charger and feed that into our linear regulator. And then we need to just tie the enable pin high. So that just makes sure that the linear regulator is always enabled. Now I'm going to just tie the output from the charger to the input of the linear regulator. Now let's just connect up our LED. And now I'm going to name this 3V3, which you'll see commonly used for like net names since you can't you, instead of saying 3.3V, you just use the V sort of as the decimal point. So 3V3 means 3.3 volts. Let's look at the LDO, which I believe also requires a minimum of one microfarad for the input and output. Once again, they don't give you the values here, but here they explain requires an output capacitance of 0.47 microfarad or larger. You want to use an X5R or X7R, which is just the temperature coefficient of the capacitor. So these don't it means that capacitance is more stable over temperature versus some other types of capacitors or ratings for caps. So what we're going to do is requires an output capacitor point for, or larger. So I'm going to just do the, the one microfarad for both the input and the output. The main thing left is to connect up the battery itself. Okay. So there we go. We have our five volts coming into the charger. It will either charge the battery here and or it can provide the system load, which goes to the linear regulator, which takes this voltage and I'm setting this to 3.3 volts. And you set that through this resistor divider. It's just a simple equation you can find in the data sheet for the, these values to get the certain voltage that you want. Now we have our data lines. We're not using the V bus. This is five volts coming in, but we're not going to use it because we're powering it through the barrel plug. All we need to grab are the D plus and the D minus. And there are two of each because remember with the USB-C, you can flip it and rotate it either direction. It will work. So that's why there's two of each pin so that you get the right connection regardless of which of the two orientations that you do. Those need ESD protection, so I'm going to connect one of the I.O. pins for this ESD chip to one of them, connect this one here. And as you'll see once we get into the layout, this, this chip actually has uh, these non-connects, but the way you, you do it in the PCB layout is you're just going to route one line directly across those, so basically it ends up shorting. That is our 
ESD protection. These two USB lines will go right to the ESP32, and it's actually on IO19 and IO20. And if you look in the ESP32 datasheet, most of these IO pins or GPIO pins have dual purpose. IO19 is USB negative. IO20 is USB positive. So what we're going to have, here's the 3.3 volt supply, and the these are decoupling capacitors. And now we just need to connect up our circuits for the enable and the boot, which is on IO0. Then we'll add a, a push button, these two push buttons that allow you to force it low so you can do a forced reset or a boot. Oh, let's, uh, we just need a resistor. Let me go grab one of our resistors down here. Okay, there's our reset and our boot circuit. These are both just a 0 0.1 microfarad. Now what I'm going to do is for any pins that we don't have connected, I'm going to add a no connect. And there we go. Now we have a completed schematic circuit diagram. The next step is to design the PCB layout for the circuit. And I'm going to be doing that in my next video, which is going to publish in one week from today. Now the odds are by the time you see this video, it's already going to be published and I'll link to it right here.